Hey, what's up everyone? Mike with Imperial Tropicals here in Lakeland, Florida. And boy, it's been a hot summer. So today has been kind of overcast, but the last couple weeks, the heat's been just on. It's been brutal, brutal water, water temps, hot. So, uh, hey, what's up Oliver, Brian P, Ahmad, what's up? Got, got everybody starting to come on. Um, I'm gonna start by flipping the camera around. Hey, what's up, Duke, Fidel, Brian P, Cat? I'm doing good, guys. It's uh, another day in paradise. So this is the, we've had lots of rain the last week, but if you see these big fish popping right here, these are uh, the walking catfish that are so dreaded for us. And these guys are very big. Like they don't get super ginormous but this has been a problem for us ever since the hurricane in 2017 so what almost a year and a half almost two years year i think that was in september um these walking catfish came in and they just been taken over so we've did a really good job this year um you know staying on top of them Normally, um, when we feed, we're, we're, you know, the person feeding looks out and sees them coming up because it's pretty obvious that there's a bunch of them in there. And when we try to knock them out as soon as we can and get rid of them because they eat a lot of fish. So, um, but I thought I'd show that off to you. I wasn't planning on it, but I rode out here and I seen that and I was like, oh man, what's up, James Smith? He says the connection's going in and out. Let me see. I'm on 4G, so it's not the Wi-Fi kicking in. Let me move around and see um, how the signal does. I uh, also see some big fish popping in here, but that's cichlids. I can see those guys. All right, Oliver says it's good there. It might be, um, might be your reception, James. Ahmad says it's going to be raining in South Florida. Yeah, every day it's been like 50 to 60% chance. I mean, you can see the skies now. It's starting to build. So I think for sure we're going to be getting um, some rain. Team Rammy's on. Kerry Cox. He's got a good signal in Mexico. Awesome, Kerry. That's, I, I still, I'm amazed every time that somebody from a different, you know, country. I know Mexico's not that far away from from Florida, but I think it's just still pretty awesome that people all over the world could could watch, you know? So, <laughs> somebody said, send that rain to Texas. Yeah, we, uh, we've been getting plenty of it and the grass is growing like crazy. Like, um, Selvin, who's been taking care of the field, has got it looking, had it looking great. Um, he's been out of town for the last two weeks and it's been raining every day, so, the grass has um, been getting taller. Andre is from Puerto Rico. Hey, we just had a couple from Puerto Rico uh, come in and buy some fish. They um, they came by about a week ago and bought a few fish. And um, they said another appointment came out today. So um, we got a lot of a lot of fish keepers from Puerto Rico. That's awesome. Lori Becker's on. What's up, Lori? James, did I get your text? No, um, I don't. Hit, send it again if you don't mind. I, James, I've been really bad with the uh, keeping up with my messages, man. Uh, my phone right now, I think as of yesterday, I had like 46 unread text messages, um, and that's that's bad. So they just, um, I'm not good at keeping up with that. It's bad enough for me trying to keep up with emails and. The social media people you know private messaging me and stuff and i just i'm not good at it so send it to me again james um i do know that we're going to ship you a star sapphire so if that's it's probably in reference to that star sapphire so just uh, shoot me a message i'll get you i'll get you taken care of and i look forward to seeing you in cleveland this year what's up long beach in new york city Rebecca Burdett says her new fish is looking good. And I know she got a Taiwan Reef and she got an Eureka Red. I remember that. So 
Good, Rebecca. I'm glad. I know you were waiting for those Taiwans for quite some time, and it's just been a really difficult year growing fish. Um, you know, the walking catfish, the flooding issue that we had, you know, the year before, the hurricane, the freezes. I mean, it's um, it's not easy growing fish. Um, you know, a lot of these fish are fairly easy to breed, but to get them up to a, a mature size, it takes a lot of a lot of time and work. You know, so I'm glad that we uh, were able to get you get you your fish. Um, Duke City says he's going to order some clown loaches soon. What quarantine process do you recommend when you get them in? So. I mean, you could quarantine them just like you do your other fish. Um, it's always good to have them isolated from other tanks. Just make sure your quarantine tank has established tank water in it. You know, if it's a tank that's already been up and running, then that's no problem. If it's a new tank that you're setting up for the quarantine, you know, take established um, media out of an established tank and move it to the quarantine tank. Also, you know, a lot of times I'll take tank water out of the established tank to jump start the new tank so um, but the quarantine process is the same uh, as the other fish Aaron Aaron with the donation that's awesome man I appreciate that I think he's in Canada too I see the CA man, I appreciate the donation um, goes a long ways um, so yeah treat them like you do your other fish um, just provide them a good adequate you know tank for them to recover from the shipping um, it's um, you know not not much different um so yeah the clown loaches are looking really nice right now so um so just order when you're ready uh corey's asking if we have blue neons or blue dragon bloods to show i do um have them and it should be okay to go into the greenhouses without the phone overheating but just be prepared for the phone to overheat um i think the greenhouse that they're in is not too hot so um hopefully the phone doesn't overheat Adana Santos, hello everyone. Um, Fidel is asking what we're doing today. Well, uh, most of my morning, unfortunately, has been answering emails and dealing, you know, with customers. We um, we've had a, a pretty busy week, just like every week, and we actually had quite a bit of issues the last I don't know three or four weeks that we've been trying to straighten out and. Um, so, you know, we got pretty much all the issues taken care of, you know, um, you know, I, I don't know if, you know, people know Brian P with a donation for our landscaping. Awesome, man. I appreciate that, Brian. It's, uh, we'll put it to good use. I promise you that. So we, um, we need all the help we can to, to keep up with landscaping. Um, the new building is um, coming along, but before I jump to that, I was going to tell you, I got an email last night. I normally don't answer the emails after work hours, uh, unless it's an emergency. But I got an email last night, and, you know, this doesn't happen very often. So, you know, but it was the rudest email I think I've ever received from a customer. I mean, it was dropping F-bomb here, F-bomb that, and, and the person hadn't even received their order yet. So their email basically said that, you know, they were highly disappointed that we put in the wrong shipping address. And now that the, the, now the post office is rerouting the box back to us because of the wrong address. And, you know, so immediately like flags went off, like we don't put in the address. You, the customer puts in the address. So I just politely asked him, you know, well, what was the um, address that you wanted it to go to? And he put in the address and uh, I'm glad I didn't send the first email that I typed out to him because it was really um, harsh but and the second one was harsh too but I took out a lot of keywords but um, you know he basically apologized after I sent the email but even when he apologized he said well you guys still should have caught that it was the wrong address and of course you know he put the address in <laughs> i didn't put it in i mean the the address went through our system just like any other address you know but you know that was one bad email but you know out of that one bad one you know we get you know hundreds of emails every week with people that are very just polite happy easy to work with 
um, you know, that, that's what makes it all worthwhile. I don't know that I could handle it if it was um, this constant, you know, um, negativity, you know. But I think people know that we, we do a good job and we always take care of people. So, um, you know, so it's not too bad, but I had to share that with you. I showed the email to, to Jacob this morning and he got a big kick out of it. He's like, wow, that's, that's probably the first, you know. So, <laughs> Stephen says, it. Oliver sent it. Fidel with the donation, little help for the fish, man. I appreciate that, Fidel. Wow, man, that's uh, that's awesome, man. I, I tell you guys, a lot of you guys know our, our our history in the fish world. You know, we've been doing this a long time. Family's been doing it for 49 years. My grandfather started breeding fish in 1970 with my parents, and that's how Imperial Tropicals all started. But the whole timeline of us being in this business man we've seen a lot of good times and we've seen a lot of bad times and um you know so we definitely appreciate the support because um i feel like we've started at the bottom and you know if we're not at the top we're getting close you know so um and all the support you guys are giving us has just been phenomenal phenomenal like my good boy josh cunningham josh man with the donation that's freaking awesome, Josh, man. I appreciate it, man. Hey, Josh, I'll, I'll tell you this, and we talked a little bit about it um, at the ACA, but once this building is up, um, we're going to be buying from, from breeders. We can't breed everything, so just know that um, in the future that we're going to work together. I know you, you, you do a phenomenal job with your fish, and, um, you know, I appreciate, um, appreciate everything that you've done for us, you know? So... Uh, Chad blocking Drew said he received his Taiwan and Flavison this week and they look great. Ah, Chad, I remember that order. I was the one answering the emails. I, I, I know, um, I think the Taiwan reef popped up after you placed the order and we made the sub for you. So I'm glad, glad it worked out, Chad. Uh, <laughs> Tom Collins <laughs> handle, handle them New Jersey style. So John Flathers says he's made it, finally made it for the live feed, man. Welcome, John. Thanks for being on. <laughs> Ed Stewart says 50th anniversary get your free walking catfish yeah now we um, we don't like those catfish man they have been a problem uh, Steven's asking how many tanks going to be there once the building is done all right so from my best estimate um, on the rows the length of the rows and how wide they are we're estimating 600 tanks minimum and that's if we go with a lot of big tanks, which I'm leaning towards, all right? Um, like I'm, you know, looking at either going with um, a bunch of 75s or 125s because um, as you guys know from, from being fish keepers that, you know, the bigger the, uh, the tank environment, the easier it is to, um, to, to take care of the fish better, you know? Um, you know, I think that's where a lot of... Um, you know, fish sellers, you know, in particular go wrong is they have these, you know, small tanks and they cram a bunch of fish in there and they hope they all sell before they have an issue in the tank, but it's, um, it's not good for the health of the fish, you know? So, but yeah, it's looking like 600 plus, you know, um, I probably will do a substantial amount of 40 gallon tanks for smaller fish. Uh, so that could push it up to, to well past 600, you know, so it's going to be big. Um, Currently, you know, we carry about 200 different types of fish. So 200 of that 600 is going to be dedicated for those fish. But then the other 400 plus tanks are going to allow me to start importing, um, you know, fish from all over the world. I have a lot of great friends that are breeders. So we're going to have plenty. My, my whole issue of not having enough tanks will, will, will soon be solved. Um, Cat's asking if you got to drill 600. Yes, yes, it's going to be a lot of drilling, Cat. <laughs> but, you know, we drilled, um, I don't know, we've drilled probably 60 tanks, 40s at one time, um, you know, and it did. It, it was uh, pretty much a good all day uh, process to drill that many. So, yeah, it's going to be a very time consuming process to drill those tanks, especially because you have to go slow, you have to do everything right, or if not, you crack a tank, you know. Steven 600 FX6s. 
No, we um, we'll, we'll definitely be having um, sponge filters. It's not actual sponge filters. It's called the Matten filters, which is basically a wall of foam in the back. Uh, my good friend Stefan Tanner um, is the um, is the foam guy, and he's um, we're going to work together with him. Yeah, it's not too bad, Oliver. It just uh, it is time consuming. So. Uh, Brian P is asking if it's going to be Aquion. I hope, um, you know, I, I'm, I definitely am talking with them. Um, the problem is, is that they're saying that they can't have that many tanks ready for me till the end of the year. So, you know, I'm hoping that um, we don't have to wait that long. So, Michael Core, what's up? Uh, <laughs> James Smith is asking about a VIP list for the celebration party for the new building. So, I I hope to have a get together, right? I, I really, I'm probably, if it all works out and I didn't plan this, it might actually be in January, which is when we started back in 1970, before I was ever thought of. Uh, it might be, if everything is a go, that we do a grand opening in January. Um, and if it's not January, it's going to be, you know, some, some time after that. And absolutely the people that have, you know, been with us, um, you know, for so long and supporting us, I'd like to have everybody here, you know? Um, but as soon as I start thinking about the planning of it, it, it stresses me out, you know? I mean, I know some people will come to Florida just for a visit, you know, but, um, you know, but we're definitely going to do a, a big shindig. So, um, Steven says he'll be there for sure. That's awesome. So just, you know, let me get the building up and running and then I will try to plan some type of a, um, <laughs> some type of a get together. We're definitely not going to go with the mods idea, Vito. <laughs> In January, we might, we might be too cold for that. So, <laughs> cats, this is going to be a bash. You're going to have to come down here and build me a bigger pool, cat. <laughs> Ed Young, hey, what's up? John Fathers. I might have missed your previous question, John, but um, but you're saying you like to provide some cool fish art for the visitor center. I'll try to read back and see what the other part of that that response was, but, but no, we love fish art. Um, we got several good friends that are uh, great artists, and you might be an artist too, you know. Um, Linnell's asking, it's been really hot down here in Florida lately. How do you prepare? So the ponds are not as bad, right? The ponds are 30,000 gallons, and they're deep. So we have stratification in the ponds, which basically means that the top layer will get extremely hot and the deeper you go the cooler it gets so the fish will go down deep um you know in the heat of the day water temps aren't too bad today because we've been getting rain and the fish are up feeding right now but um so the ponds we don't have an overheating process uh, problem um the buildings can so we try to vent vent them the best that we can uh, the one room that's been getting too hot is Guy's room, the, the secret room that I can't go in on the live feed because I lose my signal every time, which is a shame because we got a lot of nice fish in there. But um, that room has been getting extremely hot. In fact, water temps were up in the high 80s. Um, and for some of the South American fish and African fish, that's not, you know, too bad. But one thing that we did learn um, that I did not know is that the trophies do not like that high of a temperature. So we were having a little bit of trouble with some of our trophies species. So we ended up ventilating that, that room even more uh, to get some of that heat out. And, you know, guys been working on that. So uh, it's been a lot better. But so, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. We try to try to you know get the heat out of the rooms you know um, the problem with that room is we have a recirculating system in, in that room for part of the tanks and the the uh, pump um, heats up the water 
you know, in the winter time it's good, but in the heat heat time of year when it's hot, basically, um, you know, the uh, the pump actually raises that water temperature up. So, uh, Chad Blocklinger is asking about what's the loss of fish to predators in the ponds. I mean, if we had to put a, a number on it, I mean, I would say 10%. All right, and that's between the birds, the snakes, the turtles, the alligators, anything that would eat a poor fish. Um, but, you know, certain times of the year it's worse. Um, you know, this time of year it's actually getting um, more bird predators because of the low oxygen levels because of the heat. So, um, you know, but I, I'd say it's probably 10%, you know. Uh, Darth Vedder's asking if I snorkel on the ponds to check on the fish. I have before, but no, I, I, I don't anymore. Um, you know, we, um, you know, we actually try to keep the ponds greened up, which means that um, we don't want the pond to be crystal clear because in a crystal clear pond, there is no life um, cycle for the um, tiny microscopic bugs, you know, that the fish like to eat. So um, the, um, you know, rotifers, the glass worms, the, uh, even the mosquito larvae, uh, they need that kind of almost green water. So we actually try to keep the ponds, um, you know, not crystal clear. So there's a, some that are, are clear, but basically, um, you know, it's a lot healthier raising fish in green water. Now you don't want that in your aquarium because um, you won't be able to see your fish, but um, and it, it could mess up your filtration and everything else by clogging it up. But but in a pond environment, um, it's a, a lot more uh, productive to have a, a green green pond. You know, um, David Patton's asking if we could bring the well water into the tanks to cool them down. Water is 54 in the ground here in New York. Wow, that's cold. Um, our water temperature out of the ground is 71 and we do that in all the greenhouses so all the greenhouses have um basically 71 degree water pumping in there and it makes a huge difference like you could walk into the greenhouses and the air temp could be over 100 degrees but your water temps are like 78 80 you know so um so yeah we definitely could do that we and in fact it's a funny thing you said that joe and i were talking just yesterday about doing that for some of the aquariums in his room and you know, I've done that before, and the downside to it is when you pump water straight out of the ground, you have a lot of, um, we have a lot of iron personally in the water, the stuff that turns everything orange. Um, there's a lot of hardness and minerals in the water that within just a short time, literally probably a month or two, you're going to have so much calcium growing on that tank that your visibility is going to be very low. So, um, but you know we we do run it through a uh, filtration system before it goes in the tanks and um you know so it's working out working out pretty good um all right harris says he agrees it lets it grow on the front of the aquarium it works for me probably talking about the algae uh, John Fathers, yes, otters are the worst predators. We'll wipe out a pond quickly. Yeah, that is true, John. We um, luckily we haven't had otters um, in a while, but um, they are probably the worst. They will go in a pond and uh, clean it out quick, real quick. So, I like otters. I just don't like them, like them with my fish. All right, uh, Vito needs a hat. Hey, let me know. We get you one for your bald head. <laughs> yeah, but you only, you guys only got a, a, a few more uh, weeks or maybe a month of sun, and then uh, winter's upon you. So uh, I know you guys have a short winter up in New York. David Pat says he keeps his room 82, 83. That's a good temperature. That's um, it's a little hot for some species. We found that the rainbows, um, in particular, they 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 don't they don't color up as much. Um, when it gets up to 82 for us. Some species do, that's not all, but um, some of these newer species of rainbows that we're, we're working with, they actually come from a little bit cooler um, cooler water, so. Yep, cat, we got a lot of calcium in the water. 
cat says he needs imperial stocking caps. We should have some hats up, so. <laughs> Tom says, don't remind us of the weather. <laughs> yep, winter's coming. Um, Heroes is asking if I could show you an indigo snake. I'll tell you what, if I see an indigo snake, I will for sure take a video of it. And it's been a long time since I've seen one, though. Uh, I can't tell you how many years. It's probably been... It's probably been 10 plus years since I've seen an indigo. And that's a shame because we used to have um, indigos out here on a regular basis, you know? I mean, you wouldn't see them all the time, but there's definitely a population of them around. And just over time, uh, they've uh, just kind of disappeared, you know? I know they're on the endangered list in Florida. Uh, they're protected. So, um, <laughs> Michael Core with the $5 donation, He's ready to see some banging fish. Uh, all right, let's go do it. Um, yes, James, it, it does help um, with the ick, with the higher temps. Um, well, the main thing it helps is the um, life cycle of the ick happens a lot faster. Uh, believe it or not, though, it still pops up. Like, for the first time, well, I wouldn't say the first time, but only a few times have we had ick pop, pop up this summer. And we haven't visibly seen it here, but we've had customers that have received fish that um, ended up with um, with ick, you know. And it doesn't happen often. Um, I can think of three times this summer, uh, but one time recently with the electric blue rams, which is shocking because they're kept at 82 to 84. But we did have some cooler uh, days from the rain, especially at night where it cooled down and that is probably the reason just that little bit of temperature fluctuation caused the uh, caused the ick all right guys uh, i'm walking through the greenhouse i know there was a request for the blue dragons um i'm hoping my phone doesn't overheat there's some of the bigger madoka white lips that were growing up those guys are looking sweet Bunch of fry going up. Uh, some of the Travasis growing up. That's our second group of breeders that we got growing up. But I'm looking for the blue neons. Yeah, those Madokas are big. Uh, they're like five inches already. So we're uh, we're growing these up. We're probably going to take them to the aquatic experience. Is what I'm thinking. Um, hopefully everything's ready ready for that time so there's the flavicent there's the out ob ali's uh, oh yeah there's some more traverses can't really see them in the water though can you We have, uh, this is uh, some more Madoka grow outs. It's pretty cool how you can see the, um, the fish. Um, so Tom, about that. Uh, yes, the phones, they say are waterproof, but they are not. So I tried that with a, my last iPhone X and within I don't know, within a day or so, I started having lots and lots of issues with it, and I took it back. Uh, they did uh, replace the phone for me, which was nice of them, but the guy at um, the iPhone store said that, yes, it does say that, but they don't recommend doing it just because it can cause problems, so I haven't, um, I haven't done that since then uh, with my phone. I do have a, a really nice GoPro um, that I should get going at some point, but right now um, I do not have time for the GoPro, but I used to do a lot of GoPro videos. Like, like a lot of the videos on my personal YouTube page, I have a lot of uh, videos of underwater 
with the GoPro, but um, I haven't I haven't had that in quite some time. Um, I haven't had time to do that. But we plan on it, man. We do plan on it. I'm trying to find a net. All right, so let's see. We got the sunshines, electric blue all leaves, midnight, Taiwan reefs. These guys are looking nice. Uh, Vito, I do have a few Taiwans left. So uh, let me get a net and I'll show you guys some fish. Joe, what's up, Joseph? Hey, I'm looking forward to um, the aquatic experience with all, all you crazy guys so and girls. So we need to we need to plan it out. I'm a little disappointed that they cut the hours. You know, it used to be a three day show. Now it's a Saturday and Sunday show. And that just means that there's going to be uh, less time to be there. You know, and I don't like that because even when it was a three day show, it it was tough to to see everyone and now that it's a two-day show it's like cramming even more more time into a short period so um you know but i am looking forward to it we're definitely gonna have to uh plan a a meetup maybe after one night after the show uh for everybody to um to go to and it doesn't have to be no real fancy place i know um New York is um, quite expensive already. So whatever place has, you know, plenty of seating and we go out and have some food and have some drinks. All right, so here's the Taiwan Reefs. This is our breeders. But we do have some that are slightly, I can't catch you, that are slightly under this size for sale. So Vito, if you need a Taiwan reef, I got you one. So this is a little bit bigger mill. Big Cenodontus in the tank with them. So uh, James, when is the aquatic experience? It's um I want to say in October this year, like the first week in October. All right, so we do have we do have some new fish too. I'll show you those guys since we're here. All right, um, these guys are not ready for sale yet, so I might break off some pretty soon. Um, I know a few people had asked about them because they knew we had them, but this is the uh, Maloto Gold Crest. Um, so one thing I'm learning about these fish, I mean, we're actually breeding them right now. They've been they've been holding. But they do not color up. Like if you look at the picture on a um, website, you know, with the Maloto Gold Crest, the fish is jet black with a yellow blaze, kind of like the yellow blaze, but just a lot different. And the fish is just spectacular. But doing some research with some of the old timers, like here's a male right here. I mean, at some point that fish will turn jet black with a bunch of yellow over the top uh, yeah Oliver I've seen them go up towards $100 a piece uh, they get a lot bigger than this talking to some of the old timers like Leif de Mason he said that the fish only colors up in the springtime during breeding dress and that's it and then it will turn its colors off it'll continue to breed but it's a very seasonally colored fish you know so it's not going to show you know the, the crazy colors uh, all the time and I do not know how they would do in an all male tank with other aggressive fish you know some of these fish you go putting them in an all male tank and they lose all color and you know people are disappointed because the fish isn't showing any color and that's mainly just because they need to be um, they need to be with females, and that makes a big difference, you know. So, this is our OB 
breeder male peacock. So it's one of the studs that we saved back. So yeah, I don't know how they would um, color up. I have um, I have them growing up, and you know at some point we're um, we're going to break off some for sale. But I would recommend to people, you know, just to you know we're gonna have to learn about them. At the same time, our customers are learning about them because we don't keep all male tanks. We only keep them in breeding groups or species only groups. Um, so, all right, I got a couple of the blue neons in the net here. A couple of them showing, showing color. guys are still a little bit young, but they're, they're already showing good color. Vito's asking about star sapphire. Yes, we do have some star sapphires. Uh, I know for sure four inch star sapphires, um, but we... Um, we should have uh, maybe some three inch ones also. So just so you know, like here's some new fish. This is the uh, Lion's Cove, one of our new Mabuna types. Um, a lot of these tanks aren't labeled. Albus, and that's how, we, uh, that's how we check them. So every week we come in here and on the Albus there was one holding um, with zero pulled. That means um, there's one female in there holding right now. So, you know, the following week we came in here and we pulled the one that was holding from the week before. And then this week we've got two holding. So um, we're on a rotating schedule where we pull fry for two weeks and then we don't touch them for a week. And then we go back into that same rotation. Um, got the Turkish peacocks. We got the albino Taiwan reefs. We got some more Taiwan reefs. This is an uh, older batch of breeders. The German reds. The orange chadungas. That's a peacock that we've been working on for quite some time. Came from Trevor O'Shea. Red top Luandas. Black orange lithobates. Um, and guys, I, I can't tell you, I can't wait until the new building is up and we don't have to look at these vats from the top anymore. You know, like it's hard for me to show you what the fish look like without actually taking that big net and netting them up. Uh, so once the new building is up, I flip the camera on and just walk down the line. All right, here you go. Taiwan reefs, yellow blaze, dragon blood, whatever type we have. It's also going to allow me to put more fish in that I keep for my personal collection because I keep a lot of fish back that aren't on the website. So this would give me an opportunity to say, hey, I got to let go of these fish. Let's take them over to the warehouse right across the way here and put them in a tank and I guess we'll sell them, you know. So cat, the bass will still be um, used just like they are now except we're going to be able to free up a lot of space because we could take a lot of fish that is that are ready for sale to the new building and um you know it'll help me better you know organize our breeding groups you know um and it'll be easier for me to get rid of you know um fish like i said that i've just been holding on to you know so but i can't wait to um can't wait to get the um the building up to show you guys our fish in a nice clean aquarium kind of like the ones that i have in joe's room with the rainbow fish in fact we'll walk over there now and these are 40 gallon tanks but it's just a lot a lot easier for me just to flip the camera around and be like all right here you go here's the the new rainbows or whatever mr savage cichlids is in the house from chi town what's up chicago we might be in chicago in the fall it's like two weeks before the aquatic experience and we're we're getting a lot of pressure to attend that show and it just might convince us to go uh, we've heard so many good things about the um that it's the reef not reef of blues it's um aquashella 
is the name of the show. Um, so we got some Porcasani rainbows right here. Raymond, I, I might, man. I can't make any promises right now, but there's a good chance in the future that we will attend. I hope it's this fall, but the only problem is, is the new building is going to be in full swing building mode as far as getting it ready. Uh, so it's going to be tough, tough for me to take off and attend that show, you know, so. But isn't it nice just to be able to uh, turn the camera on and I mean, the lighting isn't the best in here, but um, you know, it's, um, it's a lot easier to, to see the fish, you know? See some of the discus right here. Um, these new rainbows have been real popular. This is the Dubele. These guys, we put them up last Friday and uh, they've been going out the door pretty fast. This is um, really hard to find rainbow. We also have, what's up Joe, where's the other new rainbow at? It's, uh, yeah, multi, spin cloth, multi comadas, right? Squamadas. There's only a few of those guys left, isn't there? So I know uh, people were asking, uh, they got really excited when we put these fish out because um, it's been a really rare fish in the hobby for a long time. So it's nice to be able to um, have them available, you know? So, but yeah, like I said, it's, uh, it's nice just to be able to view the fish outside of the vats. So, nice sub rooms. Raymond saying that he'll help us book, book some rooms. I appreciate that, Raymond. We, uh, it might be a last minute decision, unfortunately. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, we were talking about it this week and I just can't commit to it right now because I don't know where I'll be at with the new building. I, I don't think it'll be ready in October. I mean, I'm, I'm being conservative when I'm saying December for the building. So if it looks like that we're caught up with everything and everything is running pretty smooth, then I could see us attending Aquashella, but it really just kind of depends on where we're at. Uh, it might be two weeks before the actual show <laughs> is on and we say, all right, guys, let's, let's go, you know. Um, the downside or the thing that makes it tough for us is that the aquatic experience is like, I think it's only like a week after Aquashella in New Jersey and we're already committed to that show. So we're 100% going to the aquatic experience um you know so um all right questions lori is asking about discus no we have um we have others um so email us and we can send you pictures but um our we're not currently breeding discus so i do have a couple pairs that we're keeping around just because we like them but I could see at some point us even getting rid of some of the adults that we have. But email us and uh, we could get you some of our discus. Uh, Steven asking about mixing rainbow fish with African cichlids. Um, absolutely not a good idea, so don't do it. Um, for sure. Um, so if you're going to do a rainbow tank, do a rainbow tank, but do not mix them with the Africans. So. Uh, Josh is saying the AE is towards the end of October. Yeah, I don't know how far apart they are, but I think it's only like a week or two. Um, so that's the uh, that's the downside. Uh, Oliver is asking about how are we taking fish home that we get from you at the AE. Mm, that's a good question because you're going to be on a plane. Um, like most of the people that are local, you know, we have oxygen and everything. Um, you know, I, I guess the best thing, Oliver, um, is before I go to the show, mm, I'm trying to think. This is the problem. When we go to the show, we, we ship the fish up there. They're a little bit stressed. I mean, they do fine. But then to rebag them and ship them um, to, you know, 
Louisiana or, you know, I think it's a lot of stress. Um, but I think we could. I know uh, Tom asked when we were at the ACA about shipping some fish down to him from the ACA and we weren't really prepared for that. But I think if we, um, if we knew ahead of time that we were going to be shipping fish from the show back to somebody's residence, then um, we could probably we could probably make it happen. I know I've shipped fish from shows before, but um, it's usually when I know ahead of time and I could get the supplies and stuff. So uh, Steven is saying, Oliver, why don't you just check in with your bag? So a lot of people do transport fish like that. They put them in their check luggage and um, most of the airlines are okay with it, but it's a little bit risky. I mean, I do it. I've brought fish back from Germany like that. I've brought fish back from Argentina like that. Almost every talk I do around the country, I bring fish back um, like that. So it can be done, but you also have to be prepared in case, um, you know, the airline says no, that you have a backup plan in place to, to ship them, you know. Yeah, Joseph saying the uh, AE is the October 12th and 13th. So Akashella is, I think, a few weeks after that. So Rebecca's asking if we're planning on taking Geophagus to Aquashella. Um, oh, AE, uh, not Aquashella. So I don't know. Uh, we normally take at least one Geophagus to the shows. If you let me know ahead of time, I could bring some fish, uh, whatever fish you want that we have, I could bring up to you. Uh, like the last show that we went to, we brought some bigger wine milleri that we were growing up. Um, but, I, you know, when we, when we plan out the fish that we're taking to the show, it's literally like days before the show when we know what we're taking. Basically, we, Jacob and I will go through the rooms and say, all right, so we've got big ones of these, or these are looking nice. Let's grab some of these, some of these, some of these, and we try to grab a wide variety of fish. Um, there's some fish that I do grow up for these shows, like the Madokos. I've done that with the Star Sapphires before in the past also, where um, we, um, we, we uh, plan ahead of time growing some big fish up for the show. Um, Kat is officially putting the dates up for Aquashella and it's September 28th and the 29th, so two weeks difference between the two shows. Ahmad says he's super busy at work, gonna have to rewatch it. Um, Team Rammy's asking, what's the best algae waste support do you recommend for Peacock? Algae waste. Um, so if you're having an algae issue in your, in your tank, um, there's something um, out of balance, you know, uh, at least from my experience. So it could be from overfeeding. Um, it could be from the lights being on too much, the intensity of your lights. But um, I mean, I, I maintained my, my peacock tank at the house, you know, for two years and I never had an algae problem. Um, so, you know, I think that's, um, that's usually typically the problem. So I don't really, I don't like putting chemicals in the water. Um, you know, there's some chemicals that you have to at times, like when you do water changes, if you have chlorine in your water, you have to use prime, but, um, or some other dechlorinator, but we don't, we don't like additives in the water, you know? Um, but join the fish group if you're not on it already. And those, those, those guys, most of them are on this, this live feed right now. They're experts. I mean, and they, they deal with, things that we don't deal with. Like, I'm not maintaining canister filters. I'm not running commercial you know, lights, aquarium lights. Um, so, um, you know, the, the Imperial Tropicals Fish Keepers Group is a phenomenal uh, group of people um, that, that really know um, how to help people. So I, I know there's been two people asking about seeing my personal tank. So I do, I've got a 125 set up at the house um, we actually had a, a, an issue with the tank uh, before one of my trips this summer. I think it was the, when I went to New York for baseball with my son. Uh, we did a water change and we, we do not have city water. We have a water softener. And when I did the water change, 
there's a chlorine injection on the water softener that is not supposed to be getting through the system. Hey, what's up? Guys, I don't know if y'all know that. That's a familiar face. Hey. <laughs> She's uh, video bombing us. So Sierra's back to visit. Uh, so, what's up, guys? Yeah. How's everybody been doing? <laughs> Finally made it. Yeah. Right now they're jaw drop. So they're. Um, yeah, I don't see. I don't see <laughs> Oliver, no Marcio. Oh, Sierra. <laughs> hey, Teresa. <laughs> so. Join the group, guys. That's how you're going to get the information. William, William's on. Cat says, what's up, Sierra? Hey, hey. So, it's been so long. They it's been a you. while. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, who the hell is Sierra? <laughs> <laughs> yep, the old timers know. <laughs> the OG. Yep. Um, so, Sierra came by to visit, um, and she said hey to everyone. So, that's pretty cool. <laughs> Catherine, same where did she go? She uh, she went to go say hey to everybody. She just showed up to visit with us for a few minutes. She wanted to stop by and see everybody. So, um, you know, Green Ranger, <laughs> she's back. Tom said, oh my God. So, um, nope. So Sierra's been promising she'd stop by. Um, I was not expecting her to be this early, but I tried to get her to come by earlier and she's like, no, no, I'll wait until after the live feed. And I'm like, nah, I was like, stop by and um, tell everybody hello. So <laughs> Tom, <laughs> James. Yep. So um, we miss her. Um, I know it was uh, much better instead of me having to just do all the camera time because I'm not a in front of the camera type person um, that it was a lot better. So Ryan M says, bought my wolf cichlids from you and they're doing great. What about the red pericromus dovi? All right, so the red dovi, we do not breed. I do have a friend that is breeding them. So it is a possibility that we will um, have them someday, but the price has just, you know, been really, really high on those things. So, um, you know, I don't know, um, you know, with my friend breeding them, um, yeah, I'm sure, sure they'll still be fairly expensive, but, um, you know, basically, um, you know, I do think there's a good chance that we will have them someday. So, all right, guys. So I'm going to wrap this thing up. Appreciate everybody that joined. I greatly appreciate the donations. I'm still, still blown away by them. So every time, uh, I'm just, um, amazed at the generosity of people when they see that you're doing an honest you know, hardworking job that they support you like this. So um, I really do, um, really do appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. Thank you, everyone. Enjoy your weekend. Um, as of now, I do plan on being back next Friday. So um, check us out every Friday at noon. We do this. Uh, some Fridays we don't, but we try to do it every Friday. But uh, so guys, enjoy your weekend. Keep in touch with us and we will see you next time. Thank you.